Oh, hello, everybody. I forgot to do my audio check. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, just when I thought I was ready to go, I'm hitting a little technical snag, but I think I'll be up and running and we will be beginning in about two minutes and 30 seconds. See you shortly. live <laughs> it doesn't happen automatically but the music does end and i just like by a uh, uh, reflex press the buttons to put me live but i was fixing something i'm trying to get this app up and running on glitch and i wanted to get it up and running before i started <sighs> but uh, i don't have it up and running yet but i've started hello hi it's me dan the host of the Coding Train coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York for the second day in a row, which is not something you want to get used to. Oh, Gloria, every time I start suddenly live streaming, my little pup over there, Gloria, who's not so little actually, uh, she just like gets up from her bed and starts bounding over. I think she thinks like I'm about to take her for a walk. She's got, she's got two hours to wait. Um, I'm just seeing the chat here um, and just finished preparing dinner. Uh, and now Daniel is on. Watch the coding train with a plate of Indonesian food on my lap. Well, that sounds delicious. From new member Mark Boots, who, if I'm correct, joined yesterday. Uh, welcome. Um, whew. So today is a bit of a continuation from yesterday, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But you definitely don't have to have tuned in yesterday to be participating today. You don't have to have ever tuned in before. In fact, I know there are some new viewers. In particular, uh, I saw before I started a couple messages in the chat which said, I learned P5JS from your videos, but this is the first time I'm tuning in live. Well, <laughs> do I have news for you? Um, these live streams tend to be, uh, I think the word that I used yesterday, which is quite appropriate, a bit of a mess. Um, there's not a clear plan for them. I aspire to someday have more segments and a kind of uh, time box things and have a very clear trajectory as to where I'm going from whence I came, but none of that exists for today. I do have some items on my mental to-do list. Um, probably the most one for me to, most important one for me to get to relates to the t-shirt that I'm wearing. You can see here, uh, by the way, there's greed in this t-shirt. So these aren't the actual colors, unfortunately. But it says Processing Foundation here. Uh, the Processing Foundation is the non-for-profit organization that I am a part of. Um, you know, Coding Train is a separate endeavor, but the two are intertwined in many ways. 
Um, but, and I like to use the coding train to support the Processing Foundation to the extent that I can. But uh, Processing Foundation had an annual fundraiser. And I meant to get the link up and running for that, but I did not. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm seeing if I can find it. Uh, annual fundraiser processing foundation 2020. Come on. It's got to be. Oh, I think I found it. I think I found it. 2020. I found it. I found it. All right. <clears throat> So moving on over here, um, this was, and look at this, look at this image. Do you recognize that image? And you can see now that the colors have changed to white because it is uh, whatever I am in front of. Uh, there we go, we can see the O from organization kind of entering my shirt. Um, so one of the, uh, if I click over here, one of, oh, and the campaign is uh, no longer there, but um, we have stickers. <laughs> T-shirts. Did you get one of these? Hoodies. I don't have a hoodie. Uh, coding train videos. Wah, 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 wah. That's what, and I have not fulfilled my obligation. It's kind of like a wedding present. I think you have like one year from the wedding to give your present. So I feel like I have one year from the fundraiser to deliver on my coding train videos for the donors of to the Processing Foundation. So I'm Way ahead of the game, given that I'm not even, I guess June is about halfway through 2021, but I did intend to actually do them in January. <laughs> June, June starts with J and January starts with J. So it's kind of like the same month. Really, I'm basically on time because of the J and July is my backup plan. <laughs> Um, but um, the school year has wrapped up for me now, so there's really no excuse anymore. Um, what I uh, and so the two topics for the two donations, I have to make sure there isn't a third. If you were a, uh, oh, I see Computational Mama in the chat. Hi, Computational Mama. I love your channel. Everybody, check out Computational Mama's channel if you haven't already. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> I had a thing I was saying before I got distracted. Oh, I'm so easily distracted. Right. I know that there were two donors. One, the topic for one donor was uh, requested was the Bezier function. And the topic from the other donor is the copy function. If you are a donor who requested a video topic and you're watching right now or sometime in the near future, <laughs> remind me. I'm going to go back to my notes and emails and I'll uh, probably remember. But I think there are only those two. Um... And uh, I, so anyway, so, so I want to take some time today. It's, this is not the fulfillment of that video. This is my prep session where I am going to teach myself the inner workings of the Bezier function in P5, try to make some examples with it, and basically build a bit of a plan for a, a recorded short five to 10 minute video tutorial about the Bezier function. And spoiler alert, I'm going to be basing um, my initial research off of this book called Programming Design Systems by Rune Madsen. Um, and I believe somewhere on this custom shapes, perhaps. Yeah, there is a whole section. So I will be doing a dramatic reading of this section about Bezier curves and kind of thinking about how I want to present it. And oh, wow, this is really awesome. Um, about how I want to present it. <laughs> and thank you, Simon, for... Um, oh, um, are, are my, am I having problems with this stream chat too? Oh, you know, I just forgot about this stream chat. I think it still works. I just didn't launch it. I'll come back to that. I'm very focused on the... Um, um, uh, the new uh, random number bot features that I talked about yesterday. And I would like to return to that perhaps. Okay, um, so sorry about that. Just stream chat. I should be um, getting that back up and running. I'm getting all these uh, super chats, which is so kind of all of you. Thank you to Simone. And there was one earlier. I got to scroll back up. Uh, thank you to Simone and Gary for your very kind um, super chats. It's super appreciated. It helps to keep the engine running. Speaking of which, something else that keeps the engine running here at the Coding Train is the sponsor of today's live stream. Oh my goodness, Curiosity Stream. Um, I love documentary films. 
Um, Curiosity Stream, which was launched by media visionary John Hedricks, who founded the Discovery Channel, you know, which is albeit a lot of other kinds of reality TV programming right now. But uh, Curiosity Stream is the you know award winning destination for documentary films and TV shows covering every topic from space exploration to adventure to the secret lives of wild animals. So at that link, curiositystream.com slash coding train, you can wait, I have a bit to do. Breaking news, breaking news. My script over here says a 26% discount on the annual HD plan, which is $14.79 for the whole year. I've just been told through my earpiece here and my mental uh, brain thing, Mabob, that's in my head that uh, for this weekend only there is a special 40% discount. It is $11.79 for the entire year. I think if my math is correct, that's $1 per month for the entire uh, Curiosity Stream uh, a catalog of documentary films, but wait, there's more. There's also something called Watch Nebula, which is a streaming video service that I'm a part of, uh, made by educational uh, YouTubers um, all together. Uh, I'll come back and, and show you some, like uh, make some documentary recommendations and stuff later, but um, the link up there, uh, if you're interested, please uh, sign up. Um, I uh, it, it helps me out a little bit. And I, I think, I mean, I, I, it's rare to, I, I just love that. I, I love all the stuff on Curiosity Stream. It's really good. So, all right. Uh, back to my um, regularly scheduled programming, Bezier Curves. Um, I think I need, I'm feeling a little bit discombobulated. I don't see the chat anymore. Um, and Computational Mama is asking, does it work in India? I don't, that's a good question. Um, let's be in touch. Um, Computational Mama, are you in the Discord? Because I see... You and also Hippo Viva uh, have member uh, supporter uh, emojis next to your name. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So if you're not in the Discord, let's uh, let's get you onboarded in there. Anyone who is a member. Speaking of membership, I talked about this a lot yesterday, um, but I am producing these custom train whistles. I don't think I need to necessarily go back again. And I see that uh, Simon, thank you. You have some Bezier curve related P5JS sketches. Uh, Coding train viewer Simon does. Maybe I can show those. All right. Let's start with today's... I don't know if I have a sound drop for this. <laughs> uh, let's try this one. It is time to continue the Coding Train's reading of the random numbers. So <clears throat> as you may know, I have a book called A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates. I like to spend way too much time on this YouTube channel talking about my dear, dear love for this book. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. It's so weathered. It's been, it, I carry it with me. It's been outside in the garden. The page is falling out. Oh, I really want to find an original print of this book. But um, newly implemented in the Coding Train's uh, Discord, um, newly, I'm going to under bot demo. Let's see if I can come back to here. This is the Coding Trains Discord, uh, which um, I'm posting, putting a link into the YouTube chat. You should definitely join if you haven't already. Wonderful place to get some, well, so to get some help with your code. We're planning some new community initiatives on Discord this summer. Excited to tell you about those as they get going. Um, but um, one of the new things in the Discord is that it, the bot, the Choo Choo bot, now will generate a random walk from a particular position in the book with a uh, particular, with a random sequence of five digits from that position. So this pattern uh, is from position 4687 in the book, which I could try to find out of 1 million digits. But also, let's see, what do I say? I think if I say reading, the bot will now tell me Schiffman will continue reading the book at page one, row one, and column zero. So that means it's my reminder to continue my project, which I started yesterday, <laughs> probably restarted again every so often, to read this entire book. Will I get it through in my lifetime? A mystery, a wondrous, perplexing, unknowable question. I mean, will we all be around to see if I could get through this entire book in my lifetime? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's, a, it's a, quite a goal I've got. But I now need to go to page one, row one, 
column zero. <clears throat> and I will now read. Three, seven, five, four, two. Four, oh, <clears throat> let me start over. I messed up. <laughs> Three seven five four two zero four eight zero five six four eight nine four seven four two nine six two four eight zero five two four zero three seven two zero six three six one zero four zero two zero zero eight two two nine one six six five. So now I believe the next thing. Now that I've read that, I can set myself. I can say, uh, oh, well, let me, I forgot what the command is. Reading, set reading. Um, the command I want to say is set reading column, no, page one, row two. Wait, let's, it'll, maybe it'll tell me. Valid page, row, and column. Yes. Set reading page, page one, row two, column zero. I have updated the book position to page one, row two, and column zero. So when I ask for it next time, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Here it is. Sorry, I was typing in all these commands. <laughs> um, I will continue reading the book at page one, row two, column zero. Are you with me? Are we all okay? Do we Have we found the system that works for all of us to get through this entire book? I mean, what percentage am I through? I've read... Um, a hundred digits out of one million. Is that right? Is that a hundred digits? Five times 10 is 50. 10% uh, would be 100,000. 1% would be 10,000. 0.1% would be 1,000. I have read 0.01% of this book <laughs> in two days. <clears throat> See if you can compute the predicted date. Everybody like... You know, we can all at once, everybody in the chat, like type in the date you think I'm going to finish the book and hit enter. Ready? One, two, no, no, I'm going to do three, two, one, and you enter, but not on one, three, two, one, and then on the next, enter, because you enter on enter. You ready? Oh, wait, what happened to my sound effect? Three, two, one. Enter. So that's going to happen. I'm going to see this now in like 30 seconds to a minute because I am in the future, uh, which is very strange. You are all behind me in the past. And that is correct, Mark Boots. Maybe we can add that as a feature to the bot. Um, so just to quickly um, recap, I don't. I spent a lot of time on this yesterday and I don't want to spend uh, so much time on this, but you can... Um, what are the commands? You can participate in this in the Discord, in the bot uh, testing or bot talk channel. I don't remember. You can ask for your number. So if you say uh, my number, everybody uh, can be assigned their own random number in the book with a unique position. So nobody else can have this position 11,570 but me. Um, but I believe you can, if I... Um, uh, what uh, I can set uh, a set a new number, and if I don't give it a command, um, it's going to uh, choose a new one. So I would like to know, actually, Kobe. I think this is another note. So I think we should want the position here. So here, I would also like to have the position. It's kind of interesting. Do I want all the information always? The number, the position, the row, the column. I think the row, the column, and page number is really for me. Um, <laughs> October 13th, 2048, if you read run one row per day, which you aren't. <laughs> Simon, I'm impressed. By the way, I should use my everyday calendar. Hold on. Um, if I bring this down here, you can see this is the Simone Yerch, Yerch, Yerch uh, everyday calendar that I have here behind my green screen. Um, so maybe I can use that uh, to um, keep track of reading all of the random numbers. So um, anyway, so I would love for you to join the Discord to get your own random number. A little bonus if you sign up for YouTube membership is that you can actually set your own number. So I think I could set, like if I wanted my number to be 2048, um, I believe it's successfully 
Save the number 32,679. Uh, maybe I can't. Uh, maybe I'm still not allowed to set my own number. Nicole has the book. Wow. So having the page row column would be amazing. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, um, so let's get that. Let's, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not super organized here in keeping track of ideas. I suppose um, what might make sense is, let's see. If I go to, this is, uh, whoops, let's see. Let's go to the Coding Train GitHub and let's find, oh, Discord bot Choo Choo. This is the Choo Choo bot source code, as well as a link to all of my Discord bot tutorials. Um, and, and Chris is asking a really good question, which I'll answer in a second. Um, but I don't believe, uh, Kobe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe the code for the new random walk features are in this one. There is some code for drawing a random walk. So maybe we can, but what I was going to say is maybe we should have a place, um, a, a, a GitHub repo that uh, we can take issues and requests for this particular random number feature. Um... If your coding experience would be your age, how old are you? Asks Devanch Raj in the chat. That is a great question. Um, and Computational Mama says, three years old, the same as my son. Wow, that's amazing. So for me, I am 47 years old, uh, if you didn't know that already. But my coding age is less... It depends on how you count. I was going to say it's less than 20. Um, because I didn't really start on this path and journey of creative coding and everything that I'm doing now until I was, so it's more than my math was off, 27, so 22 years old. But I did actually do some coding as a, I think a second or third or fourth grader. Um, I learned, uh, but you know, I did it for like two weeks and then never did it again. Then maybe I did it for one week in middle school, then never did it again. So I don't really necessarily count those, but an interesting story is um, that I'm hoping will be part of the coding train programming, maybe even as early as this summer, is the computer that I grew up with was an Apple II Plus. And that exact Apple II Plus that I believe we got maybe when I was 10 years old, I have to look at the date, I'm not sure. Um, I have to figure this out, but that Apple II Plus is in my parents' house where they still live in the attic, maintained and kept in uh, a pretty good condition. And I'm planning to retrieve it sometime this summer and uh, set it up and actually like live stream the output of it to behind me. So I'm really excited to try to do that. Um, and um, I love that there are parents here. I love that there are kids and parents in the chat. This is making me so happy. Um, one of the things that always amazes me about the work that I'm doing here on YouTube is the sort of range of people in the audience uh, from young people who are just learning to code to older folks who are just learning to code to people in their 20s who have been coding since they were very young. The whole range is there and I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. And uh, Nicole is saying, I'm counting my GeoCities websites as the beginning of my coding life. Yay, GeoCities. I, I want to show you all something, which um, let's see if I can get this up. Uh, Editor.p5js um, coding train sketches. I want to bring this up because this is maybe a project for next week's live stream. Pine. Yeah, all right, so is it this one? Probably, it's one of these. Is it this one? Doesn't look like it, nope. Is it this one? Yes, so speaking of GeoCities, this is a P5JS sketch that I made that is called the Pine AI Bowl. Pine, pine, like pineapple, get it? Like pineapple, but pine AI Bowl. And what this does, it allows you to take any image, like here's one of my, the coding train wheels the mouse character from my mouse conference video. And 
Um, it, this image is rated at 99.96% pineapple. Um, so, you know, it's maybe not the most... Actually, this kind of looks... Sorry, oh, I couldn't... Ah, no, no, don't talk to me, watch. This looks pretty pineapple-like. Um, but this is related to the uh, television show Psych, which I've never seen, <laughs> and a podcast about the television show, show Psych called I Know You Don't Know. And I guess in every episode of the television show Psych, there is a pineapple. And I, I built this system for the podcast to be able to rate various pineapples. Anyway, uh, I don't know if this is worth explaining. But, um, <laughs> but, um, what I wanted to say is the podcast, I Know You Don't Know, is coming up at the end of their second season. And so one of the things I would like to do is not just have a pineapple detector, which gives a percentage of likelihood that there is a pineapple in the image, but I would like to do object detection to find the pineapple image. So if anybody's interested in helping with that project, come on into the Discord and get in touch. Um, that's, a, that's a project maybe for next week, not for today. All right, I think I've got to move on from all this stuff that I'm talking about. And I'm so confused because it's two o'clock and I thought, oh, have I been streaming for an hour? But no, I started at 1.30, so just a half an hour. Ah, and, um, oh, wait, wait, questions. There were some great questions in the chat, uh, the member chat. I should, let me see if I can get this stream chat up and running. If you'll give me a second here, I'm gonna put on my hold music. Yeah, seems to be working. Clear. Can any of you uh, repost your question if you want it featured on the screen uh, to uh, the member Discord? Uh, hold on. Ah! That'd be a little issue. That's fine. Okay. Let's see. Um, you did spell. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait. No, these are old comments. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's think of. So, uh, Chris's question was, "Does everyone get only one number?" So, yes, I believe this is correct. The idea for this is, if I say set, um, if I say set, this random number. So, here's the thing: this number one seven two four is not necessarily unique because the same five digit sequence of numbers, and I realize that's only four digits, but that's because there's a leading zero in that sequence, um, will ap appears multiple times in the book. So it is not that your random number is unique, but your index, there are 1 million indices. I mean, are there less? Because if we're giving people five digit sequences, can you not get, do we only have 999,995 indices? But for putting that aside, the in, the ideas are everyone have a, uh, their own unique index, and the random walk, um, which starts, I, I I feel like there should be ran, like a, a command that's like random walk me or my random walk, or if you just say random walk instead of giving you a random one, it gives you the one associated with your number. Um, but this pattern is unique to this position. So if I were to now say random walk for one 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 nine we are going to get hopefully oops i spelled it wrong random walk for one 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 nine we will be getting uh the same exact that's the same exact image now the interesting question is if i say random walk for one one, two, zero. So that's one index later than four, one, one, nine. My expectation is that this is going to look the same. Um, um, right. Can you see the difference? I can't really see the difference, but it is different. <laughs> the reason why it looks the same is it's using, I can't remember how, I think we're using 1 million all, like some amount of random numbers. Um, that's divisible. Uh, so I think it's 250. Did we do a two digit number? Anyway, I can't remember the details. We worked all this out and like chatting about this forever, but it's using one, one number different. So if we could zoom all the way and blow this up, we would see that this pattern is like actually different, but visually in the end, it's going to look very similar. But if I were to say random walk, you know, from a very different position, like one, two, three, um, I'm gonna get something uh, quite different. So that's important for me to mention. 
Um, yeah, I'm not getting the comments in this stream chat, but I'm gonna not, I'm worry about that later. I will figure that out later. Um, okay, so that was Chris's question. The new random walk features are on a separate branch. Okay, so then let's, so if um, that's really helpful. So if I go back to um, Discord, so if you have questions or ideas or comments about the uh, the, the Choo Choo Bot, um, please uh, put them in the issues on Discord Bot Choo Choo. Now, if you, this the code here in the main branch is the code that directly corresponds to my video tutorials, but I expect that if we go here, uh, maybe it's number DB, that's my guess, or version two dash deploy, I'm not sure, Kobe will tell us. Um, one of these uh, is you can find the code for the actual new random number stuff. But we want people who are following the tutorials to be able to find the code from the tutorials uh, here. Okay, um, that was one question. Uh, other things, can you let me know how many rows are on a page? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I will answer that later. It looks like the, uh, it looks like it's a hundred and, oh, hold on, I can look at the first page. It is 50 rows, 50 rows on every page. Um, okay, um, just looking. That's interesting. The pineapple detection system always detects a pineapple with transparently, tra transparency. Okay, all right, now guess what it's time for? That's right. It's time for Community Contributions. It's the part of today's live stream where I somehow, through some arbitrary system that could always be improved, pick some things that you, the viewer, have made and created in response or to a particular video tutorial or example that I made. Um, I noticed uh, in the chat someone suggested that we should have a set of community contributions for retro GeoCities web pages. That would be a fun uh, video or live stream for me to do. Um, Version two deploy, according to Kobe. So um, yeah, so here's my new way of doing this, um, um, which I think we're gonna work on um, doing this differently over the summer, but I'm going to go to the coding challenges. Um, let's go to coding in the cabana today, um, which there's only five of them, but let's see some community contributions from my coding in the cabana video. And I haven't made one of these since last July. Oh, I don't know. It was a good idea at the time. Ugh. But let's let's look at some community contributions. Um, the other way that, by the way, I can do this, which I'll, I'll, I'll do, let's do Coding the Cabana first. So I'm gonna go to Discord. I am going to get a, a ran it's using numbers in pairs of two. Right, the reason why we are using numbers in pairs of two to make the decision of the random walk is if I only used a, di a random number with, a di with one digit, that's zero through nine or 10 options, that's not divisible by four. So we would not have an even distribution. I suppose we could do something like modulus eight. Would that work? And then, to, and then modulus four? But the point is uh, 20 options is divisible by four. So like zero, zero through four, five through nine, 10 through 14, 15 through 19. Um, each of those correspond to up, down, left, and right, one option in the random walker. So uh, the random walk is, I think, 500,000 steps, if I'm right about that. Okay, the music is way too loud. Sorry about that. I will correct that. Let's... Now the music is much quieter for your community contributions. So let's pick a random number from the book. We got the random value from the book, uh, I, the 94630, which if I say that number, I mean, I'm gonna get zero, right? Modulus five, because there's five uh, um, Cabana videos. So we're the random number that was picked was one. So we're gonna go to the Mar rows. And there are, ooh, there are one, two, three, or okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight to look at. So let's do random again, We're getting a random number from the book. Uh, 44106 uh, modulus eight is two, but that's the third, zero, one, two, index two. <laughs> this is so insane. Zero, one, two, we are doing, ah, 
I believe we looked at Sam Lee's contribution yesterday. Also, um, let's um, let's look at uh, we'll we'll look at it. I'll, I'll look at a few of these. More rows linked to scroll. So just to remember, if you haven't watched this video, this is the particular pattern that I create in this video, which is. The more rows, uh, right. I guess I am varying some parameters uh, in the formula that are uh, in these variables N and D. And as I vary those parameters, um, we start to see this unfolding or blossoming, so to speak, of the more rows flower. So let's look at what um, Sam Lee would do this particular pattern, more rows linked to scroll. I think I've looked at this one before. I mean, I've looked at it personally, but I think I've looked at it on the stream. Oh, oh, right. This is showing us a, uh, like, essentially, like, there's a, a text, a poem, and this is from, uh, presumably from Shakespeare, uh, Romeo and Juliet. And as you scroll, this graphic up here in the right changes some of the parameters, and we see it's a very subtle thing. So it's like, it's kind of like a flip book while you're reading a book. By the, the, a little bit of an aside here, and I might try to do this. With the Nature of Code book, I wanted to have in the margins of the entire book a little flipbook animation of like a flocking system or something like that. So uh, this is a little bit of a, a digital version of that. This is really particularly wonderful. Thank you, uh, Sam, for this excellent community contribution. Uh, let's go look at another one. Um, uh, <laughs> David Snyder, I feel like we've looked at some of these. I'll have to do, let me have to, I have to do it randomly. Um, let's go to the, um, I believe actually the bot, um, if I say, um, the, if I use the the exclamation point random, um, it gives a random <laughs> number just using the JavaScript math.random, not from the book. So, uh, and if I were to say uh, eight, it gives me a random number zero through eight with a decimal, lopping that off. So zero, one, two, these, I got five. So let's look at index five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, more rows with Perlin noise. This is a thank you, by the way, for writing a note here that this has flashing images. So I will happily uh, give that warning to the viewers now that if you're sensitive to flashing images, I haven't actually looked at this, but um, this may have some flashing images on it. So I'm going to click over to it to see. And um, we can see, oh, look at this. Is my mouse controlling it or am I just imagining that? But it looks like this is just a different way of varying uh, the pattern. I think if I zoom in, you can sort of see it, uh, some of the sort of beauty, the beautiful geometric patterns that appear. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's go look at one more, more rows. Uh, let's get, uh, oh, zero. Did I look at zero already? I looked at zero already. Oh, no, I didn't. I can't remember. Zero was what I picked. Um, oh, I think I forgot to eat lunch today, people. I'm sorry. I had a very big breakfast, kind of brunch-ish meal. I'm like getting a little, getting a little, it's Friday. It's been a long week. It's been a long year. Woof. Uh, let's look at the Mara Rose with UI. Um, and here we go. Ah, awesome. So one of the things that's a little bit of an issue here is that um, the way I have my um, high contrast mode makes it hard to see. Let's go back. Um, I think I can fix that. YouTube compression did not like that, I was uh, just told. All right, so we can see here. Oh, let's take a look at this. This looks like what we've got here are um, different, uh, a little nice little menu here so I can choose different things. Like I can draw the rose pattern, which is all the little interconnected vertices or just the outline of that rose pattern. Um, I can We can select loop drawing, which will uh, kind of show it uh, accumulating over time. Then loop N and D, which is what, uh, or, and, which is what I kind of did in my um, version. But what I'm curious to see here is these are like different colors that I can pick. That's kind of fun. And what I love about this is now I can play with different values of N and D. So let's go to the um, uh, Wikipedia page for the more rows pattern. What I would like to do here is just look at like, so N is seven and D is 29. Let's make sure this is working correctly by putting in seven. And we can see here that this is 
quite distinctly, although with a slightly different rotation, it's flipped, you know, P5, Y value points down as in a traditional Cartesian plane, the Y value points up. So that's probably the reason for it being flipped there, but we can see, and so we can, uh, what's kind of fun is I can kind of go through different numbers and try different um, uh, possibilities. And then we can sort of see it animate, which is always fun. So thank you. This is a wonderful uh, demonstration of how you can create a user interface um, to be able to explore a particular generative algorithm. Okay. Ah. <laughs> All right, everyone. It is 2.15. My plan these days, I try to max out at a two-hour live stream. I'm gonna go. So I'm going to take a break in about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to see if I can find like a granola bar in my household somewhere, give myself a little sustenance. Uh, thank you to all of the folks who are saying things like, um, I, I, you know, that, that you love the videos and you've learned a lot from the tutorials. Zach writes, I would have failed my class. I doubt that. I seriously doubt that. If I helped in some way, it was only to bring out what was already there. So, uh, but thank you for that nice comment. Uh, some people are commenting on the um, length of the beard. Um, I've been trying, the, the barbershop that I used to go to closed during COVID and never reopened, which is very sad to me. Um, so I'm kind of like not sure where to go. Um, but I'm going to find a new one. Anybody got any Brooklyn barbershop recommendations? I will take them in the chat. <sighs> All right. Um, what is coming up? What is next? What do I want to do? I think maybe in Red Wilderness. I forgot that I used to call myself. I was looking, by the way, let's, let's just, I'm just going to show you something insane. Uh, coding train at home. I called it, this was about one year ago. I was, for some reason, one of these came up. Um, which is a later one, March 28th, April 3rd. Let's look at this one. Um, let's see if I can find, this was a fundraiser. Let's see if I can find myself just in like large format here. Was this the one? There was one of these I have like, oh no, I have like a haircut on this one. Trimmed beard. One of these, like I, I saw myself and I was like, Oh my goodness, where, what is that beard? Maybe it was the fall. Okay, uh, I got, I got uh, sidetracked. <clears throat> this probably would be a good time for me to take a break, but I'm trying to think, oh yes, let's do the live poll. Let's check on the live poll. I'll take a break, come back and do Bezier curves. Good plan, good plan everybody. Thanks for that suggestion, brain. <laughs> um, okay, give me a second here. Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> All right, this is, thank you. I got a, a huge shout out to many different people, but in particular, uh, Foxy on uh, GitHub has done uh, an incredible amount of work on this live poll system since my last live stream. This is a web application built with Node. Um, it uses um, something called NEDB to save information. And basically, um, you, you, you can go to this URL, but I don't think you will have access to this create a new poll. So for example, as a test, if I create a poll, and so like, which function should I start with? And I can say copy or Bezier. And I can click create. So now I have this poll. Now this is a link you could actually go to, to vote. <laughs> Untested. I have actually not tested this. And every time I come to do this in a live stream, it doesn't work. So that's probably what's going to happen today. But I think even better, I think if you just go to... I forgot all the routes and I know they are documented in the readme. I think if I just go to newest, it's going to show me this particular poll. Overlay mode is making it transparent. Um, and so, and then uh, I don't know how to get the voting link to you. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll post it into, whoops. Um, 
I'll post it into uh, Discord. So, uh, and then somebody can take this and bring it over to the chat. I'm gonna go to this links channel. This is a channel I use while I'm live streaming to share links to things. So if I post this, oh, Incredible Fox. Incredible Fox in the chat, in the house. Thank you, Incredible Fox for all of this tremendous work. Uh, and you can also answer my questions that I'm not sure <laughs> what to do. All right, so now I think if I go here, you know, um, let's go to this vote view. I personally think it makes sense to start with the Bezier function. So I'm gonna click vote. We'll see if it takes my vote. Um, and we can see the votes are there. This is promising. Now, the point of me doing this is I am going to go to uh, the overlay here, uh, which should be here. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, time out. Uh, I think I need to refresh this. Did we crash it already? Uh, uh, <laughs> how do I force a refresh? Oh, refresh browser when scene becomes active. Okay. There we go. Um, but the view that I want is actually not this one. I want the overlay one. And I forgot what that is. We talked about this. Um, and um, let's see, where is it in the readme perhaps? Um, newest Q, oh, there's a QR code. Oh my goodness, I forgot about that. Forgot about that view. So one thing I should definitely show you is also, if I just go to QR code, this is actually, uh, you could scan this and it'll take you to the latest poll. Um, but there was a view we talked about in, and I can't remember what it is now. Um, I, mean, I wonder if just looking at it for it in the code would be helpful or in our pull request discussion. Um, does any, do you remember what the sort of default for the overlay view is? Is it just like, do I just say, there's like a query string I can do? I can't remember. <laughs> Incredible Fox, do you remember? Let's, oops, see what's happening here. Um, poll, poll ID compact equal true. Can I do that with newest? Let's, hopefully I can do that with newest because I don't have the poll ID. <laughs> over here. Uh, so let's, uh, let me go to properties, newest, question mark, compact equals true. And then I can hit okay. Let's see if that works. Mm, I don't think that worked, but that's fine. Um, I could probably get the, the uh, wait, I, did I, I linked it over here in links. So I can get it, uh, pull, pull ID, so I can do this. So let's add that to the newest as a new feature. Um, but I'm gonna paste this in here, pull. And then what did I, I need to do is compact equals true. Let's see if this works. There we go. And it is transparent, which means now, I can put it in front of the camera. Look at this. Look at that. Awesome. So now I can go and shrink it. This has been my dream. My dream is coming true. Here is the poll. I am behind it. It is live and real time happening. I can also now, I should be able, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to switch over to here and also add browser. Uh, add existing this one and also have that here. I mean, I don't, it's not as, I mean, I could also just bring it up. I have a whole computer to bring it up, but, um, and maybe this one, I actually want it to have some background, but the point is I can come here and I've got it going live. Now, 67% of you have voted for Bezier. I, uh, 103 votes. There are, according to my, 
uh, YouTube uh, panel here, there are 300 people with this browser page open. So let's see if we can get some more votes going. The camera was defocusing probably because I did this um, and I have it on autofocus and it's, um, it's one of these Sony mirrorless cameras that has a feature where it looks for your face and focuses on it. I do feel like I'm kind of dark. Let me go check the camera settings. Oh yeah, wow, super dark. I mean, I could turn up my lights, but I just adjusted. I got, it, I, the sun was out earlier and that's, now I feel, feel like I'm way too bright. Let me adjust my lights. <laughs> uh, this is very important that I do this while I'm live streaming. <laughs> I'm going to take a break in a minute and come back and do the Bezier curve now that we have this live poll. So this is great. I can always, the, the amazing thing is if I want to put up a new poll, watch this. I could just, uh, uh, let's, let's, so let's consider this poll done. What is something, uh, um, um, what's, uh, what's something I could do now is, uh, well, I, I could just put up a poll. This is great. I can always put up a poll and I could always have it, um, um, uh, here, oh, um, ah, no, ah, come on. I think I should align it up with the top here and it could have more than two options. So, okay. All right, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so I think what I would like to do is take a break, um, and come back. And, uh, I think the results of this poll um, we'll, we'll be looking at the Bezier function um, in uh, P5.js. So hold on, I'm just getting myself a little bit set up here. Um, yikes. Um, oh. No. There we go. All right. <clears throat> So uh, before I take my break, I would like to thank today's sponsor. And I have my list of recommendations up here already. Oh, the poll is there. Okay, hold on. Let's let's take two. Take two, everybody. Uh, take two. <laughs> before I take my break, I would like to thank today's sponsor. And today's sponsor is... Curiosity Stream, and I'm going to play a short video from Curiosity Stream. It's about 30 seconds. From the founder of Discovery Channel comes a new independent streaming service, Curiosity Stream, home of groundbreaking documentaries and award-winning original series. Follow your curiosity. This is Curiosity Stream. So, um, Curiosity Stream, and if you go to uh, Curiosity Stream slash Coding Train, you will see that the discount is 41% off annual plans and complimentary access to Nebula. So what is Nebula, first of all? So I've talked about this before. I'm part of a group of educational creators that teamed up to build a platform where creators don't have to worry about demonetization or the YouTube algorithm. It's called Nebula, and we're partnering with CuriosityStream. Nebula has ad-free content and experiments with different kinds of content. So let me just show you the um, Nebula website, Watch Nebula. You can see that, I don't know about you, but basically, all of the YouTube channels that I enjoy are kind of all um, uh, here on this. Uh, oh, there's so many like amazing channels. So one thing is like just as a for, sort of discovery engine, if you want to find content that you probably would like if you like the coding train, um, I think you will find a lot of that um, here on Nebula. Um, uh, you know, there's just so many things to highlight here. There's also a bunch of Nebula originals. So Tom Scott has a Nebula original called Money. Um, and so what does this have to do with Curiosity Stream? Nebula, you can get on your own. It's a streaming service. So it has apps and for TV and all of that stuff, but you can actually get Nebula for free. This is not like a trial or anything. You get it for the entire time that you have it if you sign up for Curiosity Stream. And I realize I'm blocking the uh, note here about the 41% off. Um, so um, um, 
Curiosity Stream loves educational creators and supporting more EDU content. So if you sign up with you, I got to sign up with that coding train link. Um, not only do you get access to Curiosity Stream, but you will also get Nebula for free as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member. So this is right now only this weekend. So only like today through this weekend, it's 41% off. That's less than $12. Like eleven seventy nine, that's like one dollar a month for a uh, both Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Um, so there's so much. I, what I wanted to do is I was like making a list of like things that I have like really enjoyed on Curiosity Stream. Um, let's the, the, these are a whole bunch of them. Uh, calculating Ada, the Countess of Computing. I've talked about Dr. Hannah Fry, who's the host of a bunch of these videos. Um, the Kingdom, how fungi made our world, is a really really cool documentary. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really excellent nature ones. Secret Lives of Big Cats, Owls. But I wanted to pull up um, Nature's Mathematics. Um, like there's just so much that's um, really connected to the work that I do on the coding train. Um, I, I don't think the audio is coming through for this, um, which is something that I could enable. But you can see um, this is a wonderful series about the beauty of fractal patterns uh, uh, as found in nature. So it's just the perfect complement to the coding tutorials. And I get a lot of inspiration from um, watching this. Um, um, so, um, I really, really, um, recommend it and, um, it's a great, it's a great way. It's also like, it's a, a wonderful way to, um, support my channel, um, and educational content as a whole. Uh, again, it's $12, which is like $1 a month, I, uh, which is really insane, uh, for the whole year. So if you go to that link, curiosity.com slash coding train, um, uh, you will find that discount and unlock all that there is on curiosity stream and watch Nebula. Okay. Um, I, um, I'm going to leave that up. I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> come back over here. Um, we see the poll is still going. I'm going to take a five minute break, uh, find myself a granola bar, get in a couple minutes, e enjoy eating it while I watch a couple minutes of uh, nature's mathematics. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, come back and explore Bezier curves and try to make some uh, an interesting uh, example in P5JS. And uh, yeah, so, you know, um, <clears throat> um, see you in just a few, within five minutes, okay? Uh, put on this music and I'll be back.
Just one more minute, we'll be starting. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Whew, that was a quick break. Oh, look, my, my camera is in a weird spot. It's like, there we go. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Oh, it is, by the way, um, where I sit here in the attic, there is a small window over there, directly where I'm pointing, and I can see, um, you know, I'm in a, a small building here in Brooklyn, and the attic is just like slightly above the buildings next to me. Um, and I can sort of, I can see some trees and I can see the sky. And it was like, there is a terrifying looking storm cloud approaching. And I don't know that I've recently uh, ever live streamed from here with a storm going on. So I wonder if it hits, if you'll be able to hear the rain and the wind. And it gets very exciting sometimes up here in the attic when there's a big storm going on. So we'll see if that happens sometime in the next 40 minutes. I am going to try to give myself a hard cutoff at 3.30 p.m., which is about 50 minutes from now. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, I've been looking forward to this weekend for a long time because it's been an incredibly busy, uncomplicated, uh, you know, last few months. Um, but, um, and I've got a lot of stuff going on in June <laughs> and a lot of plans for a coding train, a lot of stuff still to catch up on that I didn't finish in May. But I do feel like this weekend with the end of the NYU semester, uh, with it being, it's a holiday here in the States on Monday. Um, it's going to be great. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you. I'm excited to look at Bessier Curves. And then 3.30 begins the weekend. Um, and Nicole is saying, I'm just getting the storm Toronto just got. I don't think it, that's like, doesn't it go the other way? <laughs> Are you in Toronto? That's a great. Uh, I, I love Toronto. Um, I had such a wonderful time there. A bunch of years back. Maybe I shouldn't go on about that right now. Let me come back over here. Thank you again to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's live stream. Um, and I am going to go to the browser and look at this. What's here? Two sketches created by Simon Tiger. So let me look really quickly at these two sketches. Uh, I want to look. I want uh, today. What I want to do in the next forty-five minutes or so is understand more about the Bezier function in P5.js. Look at some examples uh, like Simon's here that use the Bezier function. Um, and then also uh, try to make my own example for it and come up with some ideas for what I might do in a video tutorial about it. Um, wow, it's storming all over the world as I'm seeing by the chat. So let me get, um, some of my links open that I want. I want to get programming design systems, custom shapes open. Um, so, and I wanna have the P5 web editor open and I'm gonna put it back to high contrast mode. So let's start here. This is uh, somewhat of a community contribution. <laughs> um, which is, so let's look at Simon's uh, Bezier curve functions here. So what does this do? Uh, it looks like I can move these things around. Uh, add point, uh, and then I can use this slide. Ooh, whoa. This is kind of amazing to me. I see, add point, move point. Oh, I see. Oh, look at this. So this is a this is a pretty advanced level use of the Bezier function, but we can see that the the point is I think what we can start to gather from this is that there is a curve that is drawn. That's the white line here, 
And then there are all these other points that somehow define and control how that curve is being drawn. So, and this is a really fun demonstration of being able to do that. So thank you, Simon, for sharing this. Let's go look at Simon's next one. This is Bezier Editor. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Um, so now this is more like what I'm used to seeing. Uh, and the, the fact that there are four points here is really key. Um, if you are somebody who has worked perhaps in a, uh, a, a program like Adobe Illustrator or name your other non-Adobe related product, um, you've probably designed uh, elements in a, some kind of graphics context with this kind of drag and drop like mechanism. And we can see mirrored, there's different uh, control mechanisms, closed, which is closing it, control spacing is doing something, export. So this is great, this is great to see. So this is ultimately in many ways where I would like to get to. I wonder if as part of the tutorial, making a demonstration like this, perhaps a little bit less sophisticated, a more basic version of what Simon has made here could actually work quite well. So maybe I will explore that. So let's do a bit of a dramatic reading here. Um, I'd like to plug um, and um, uh, Rune Matson's wonderful book, online book, Programming Design Systems. Um, there's a lot to say about it, but um, the main thing to uh, understand here is that if you have, you know, you, you if you're not new to P5, you're probably familiar with the way that you might draw a triangle in a canvas. So typically, the way that you might draw a triangle in a canvas is by setting three points. Uh, I made up some points there, and we can see, look, I drew this triangle by three points. Here's an X, Y, 100, 100. Here's an X, Y, 200, 100. Here's an XY, 150, 300. That makes up a triangle, and I'm calling the triangle function. The same is true for line, ellipse, circle, square, rectangle. These are uh, kind of, what are they? They're the, they're the default shapes. <laughs> they're the shapes with wit to which functions exist to draw those shapes. But if you ever wanted to draw a shape that wasn't a rectangle or a triangle or a line, you know, with two vertices or three or four, um, <clears throat> um, you can instead use the begin shape and end shape function. And what begin shape and end shape do is they allow you to say, I'm gonna start a shape and I'm gonna define a set of vertices and then finish that shape. And whoops, the result is ultimately the same but there's, I don't think I can edit this code, but um, there's a lot more possibilities. Look how cool this is though, that I can drag and drop this and it updates the code. That's a really nice feature of this book. Um, so these are nice examples, right, of different uh, shapes. Oh, and there, it clicked me over to a GitHub page that we can see. Um, <clears throat> all right, now the question is, do I wanna approach the Bezier curve through the, um, methodology of using begin shape and end shape or just with the Bezier function. Oh, guess what? <laughs> Let's see, I just like, I like this idea of like spontaneous live polls. <clears throat> so um, just since we've got that going here, um, let's see if this can, I wanna see like what, how quickly can I make a quick live poll that will be an overlay? <laughs> Not very quick apparently because of how slow glitch is. Um, <clears throat> And I'm just curious if I go to here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, glitch. Why do you, why do you forsake me so? Let's go to the P5 reference, I'm gonna give up. And so let's look for Bezier. So the thing about a Bezier curve um, right, like the weird thing I did, one of the things, and this is a criticism that I've heard about some of the, the sort of like processing style API, is that just looking at this, it's kind of hard to know what these numbers do. <laughs> like, what well, I mean, I it, the documentation tells you, and I'm so used to doing this, it comes somewhat automatically to me, but I can see like, what are all these different numbers? 
x, y, x, y, x, y, the three x, y vertices of a triangle. The Bezier curve is like quite like overwhelming. To, the Bezier function is quite overwhelming to look at because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So we can guess if we're used to using P5, which we are, and I'll keep saying we, which I am at least, that these are um, four, what did I say, eight numbers, four x, y points. And based on Simon's demonstration, um, we saw that there were, looked like there were these four points associated with the curve. And this is true. Let's keep looking here. So first, let's, this is nice to look at a little history here. The Bezier curve algorithm was popularized by Pierre Bezier in the 1960s as a solution to a common problem in computational geometry, drawing curved lines that can scale to any size. Interesting. The Bezier curve algorithm solves this problem in a very elegant way by introducing the idea of control points. Invisible gravity points that attract the line to bend into a curve. A Bezier, um, a Bezier curve with a single control point is called a quadratic Bezier, while a Bezier curve with two control points is called a cubic Bezier. So this is, so a Bezier curve, so this is a quadratic one. There are two endpoints, endpoint, endpoint, and one control point. And as I don't think I can drag it here, you can see how that control point is causing the curve to curve up and down. Here there are two, two endpoints and two control points. And uh, I see, this is now allowing us to create a more complex shape with multiple vertices, yikes. I think what I would like to do um, is, it takes a bit of practice to, 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 to use the Bezier functions and knowing how many Beziers you need to draw a specific shape can be hard in the beginning. It does not help that the control points are invisible. So it can be helpful to spend some time playing around with the example above before diving into the code. So I wonder if I could, as an exercise, without looking at one of these, see if I can recreate one of these shapes without looking at the code. I think though, as my first example, the way that I would like to demonstrate and I guess I can go from here. Bezier demonstration. And if anybody wants to follow along, I will post a link to this sketch right here in the links channel in Discord. But what I am going to do is, um, and I think I'm going to do the be do the points in a Bezier curve. Do they typically? Um, do they have names? I think of those endpoints and control points. I'm going to say um, x1, y1, x2, y2, control x1, control x, control y1. I don't know if this is, I, maybe I should use the vectors, control x2, control y2. So let me use all of these. And let's draw, let's say that, um, uh, let me give them some initial points. Um, X2, Y2, and let's say 300, 200. So stroke 255. And um, let's make this fun. Let's, let's make it a little bit bigger. Give myself a little bit less space here. A little bit more space here. Turn on auto refresh. Uh, background zero, stroke weight four, line x1, y1 to x2, y2. Let's just start with this. So this, oh, there's something by the way in my monitor over here that's really distracting me. So I'm going to, uh, there, I fixed that. All right, so here's some basic code to draw a line between two points. Now what I would like to do is set the control points. So 
So if I'm calling that CX1, so let's just make one of the control points um, 150, a 150. And then I want to draw a point at CX1, CY1. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm sort of building the elements here and I should maybe draw all of them. Um, X1, Y1, and we can think about color and all of that. But I just wanna be able to visualize everything. Um, and let's make it a little, quite a bit bigger. Okay. Um, and then I also wanna have another control point CX2, CY2, and let's initialize it to somewhere. And let's say uh, 250, uh, 250. Okay, so this looks like, um, this looks like uh, all of the pieces that I need. And in a way, maybe this line isn't even so relevant. So I've got two endpoints and two control points. Of course, you know, this. these could be endpoints and these could be control points. It doesn't really, it's all arbitrary. But I'm trying to start with something that I know or have a sense of how it will ultimately look. So if I were to call the Bezier function and set first an endpoint, then a control point, then, oh, uh, whoops, then another control point, and then the last, <laughs> the last endpoint. Uh, and I want to say, interesting that it fills it. There we go. And what if I were to, just for right now, say CX1 equals mouse X, like if mouse is pressed, if I press the mouse, I can uh, control one of the control points. So there we go. Now, I think in the demonstration, um, I, and I see that wave is making a point. Will I go into the actual algorithm, not just the pre-built function? That is a really, I would love to do that. I don't know if that's, that's not necessarily my intention for the shorter video that I intend to make. Well, that would be, certainly be something to explore here and to understand it further. But let me also, uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to annotate all the pieces of this. Let me say stroke weight one and draw a line from X1, Y1 to the first control point. Just wanna basically recreate the default diagram that I'm always seeing, which I think looks like this. And then as I move this around, you can sort of see how it is the control point for this part of the curve. Now, obviously I would want to do something more sophisticated where I pick um, um, different, um, uh, where I'm able to have maybe each of these points be an object that I could click on and move it around if I really wanted to build a tool to be able to drag and drag around and make my own custom Bezier curve. But that's not really particularly where I'm going with this. I just want to understand the Bezier function. Any questions <laughs> that about what I've done so far? I'm going to look at the chat. Um, can you guys hear those birds singing? The storm has not arrived yet. I was going to go for a jog today. I wonder if I'll have time to do that before it rains. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the next thing that I'm going to save this um, and I'm going to duplicate it. Because what I would like to understand now is how to do and Zachary MacArthur saying the algorithm is far less complex than most of what you've done in the past. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll try to take a look at that in a little bit. I mean, I had my, my trajectory here that I'm thinking is I wanted to just understand how the Bezier function itself works. 
Now I want to get to the point where I can use this same function, the same functionality, but with begin shape, end shape, and quadratic vertex, Bezier vertex, etc. cetera. Um, people are interested in the algorithm. So I, I, I um, oh, the chair is making a squeaking sound. Yeah, this is like a, a by the way, I, I hate that I'm sitting right now and my intention, if it works out for me to, I have a new spot where I'm gonna live stream from is to be standing. Um, so sorry about the chair sounds. Um, <clears throat> Um, what I was hoping to do was actually take the Bezier function and look at it in the context of something like the self-avoiding random walk and visualize it differently. But let me um, let me get one step further with this, and I'll, maybe I'll look at the algorithm as well. Which is that what I want to do is say begin shape, end shape. Now, what happens if I say vertex x1 y1 vertex x2, y2, and um, let's just make this uh, a different color. I want to figure out how to get this orange line to follow this exact path. Is it as simple as saying Bezier vertex? and then just giving it four. Um, no, what is it telling me here? Vertex must be used once, okay. So is that the control point? When I say Bezier vertex? Interesting. Is this how it works? No, actually I have no, okay, let's look it up. So let's see, what does it say in runes, vertex? Oh, Bezier vertex. Oh, let's look at the, draw more sophisticated curves. Let's look at Bezier vertex reference page. Um, all right, so how does this work? Oh, control point, control point, anchor point. That's interesting. So you give it a vertex, which is, so it's like, it's almost like you chop off. Looks like the way that it works is you take this out and put that in as the vertex and then the Bezier vertex is all the rest of it. Ah, interesting. So then if I wanted to keep going, like I could make this another vertex and then I could continue on with two more control points to the next point. That's interesting. Okay, so I never, never occurred to me to do this. The quadratic vertex would just be, is that just one? Then the quadratic vertex is one control point and then the next point. Oh, fascinating. Totally makes sense. Okay. I can't believe how long I've been doing this and I never really like bothered to check how this really works. Um, fascinating. Okay. So now I understand this. Um, an easy thing to make it fun would be to animate a few Beziers in a particle system and let them draw. Yeah. You can keep going without without adding more regular vertices. I uh okay, can I? Like, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, ah, okay. So what I kind of wanted to do is the following. I'll show you. So I'm gonna go to just sort of see how this works. So this is my self-avoiding walk uh, example. And let's make the spacing like 50 just to, all right. So this is an example that I'm working with, which is a self-avoiding walk. And I've talked incessantly about this. There's a edited coding challenge video. It's about 40 minutes long where I code through this entire thing. Soon to be published. I'm gonna duplicate this. 
uh, and say uh, with Bezier. Because what I was curious to do here is you'll notice here that I have begin shape, end shape, vertex. So what would it mean for me to start using Bezier vertices to draw this path? And I did this, by the way, um, there is something called curve vertex, which you can see just kind of makes it a little curvy, but I think we could get even further with this with a Bezier vertex. So I think the way for me to do this, I need to have access to uh, an index counter. I equals zero, uh, I is less than path.length, and then I plus plus, uh, and uh, let spot equals path index I. So this is the same, but now I could say, let control one equal path I plus one. Control two equal path I plus two. And then um, anchor equal I plus three. Then I'll want to skip ahead. Like I want to use four points at once. Although can I just do if I can keep going, I can just say, ah, wait, 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 wait. I can start at one. I can say vertex path index zero dot X path index zero dot Y. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the, um, this is I plus zero, I plus one, I plus two. Then I could say Bezier, vertex, control one dot X, control one dot Y, control two dot X, control two dot Y, anchor dot X, anchor dot Y. Um, can't read, and then this has to be path dot length minus two. Okay, but I also wanna go up by three each time or by two? <laughs> I mean, is this what I meant to do? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Does this make sense? So I'm using three points and going up by three, yeah. So hold on, let's... Um... Let's give myself a lot more space to work with here. Now, unfortunately, um, the particular algorithm that I'm using, it gets stuck quite easily and takes quite a while to get um, past being stuck. And then I think I can also, I think actually for the sake of argument, I should um, also, it might be interesting just to try quadratic vertex, but, um, I should also say here, vertex like path uh, index path dot length, like I should do the last one also. And um, let's give myself a lot more space see what happened. Uh, I always like to do this when I've got something. Uh, let's go here and see. This is pretty interesting. Could be nice on the 3D version of this. Random walk Bezier curves. I quite like how this looks. I mean, it really looks like I'm making some kind of strange map, terrain, coastline-like thing. Um, I think what I would also like to do just to, um, uh, because I have such a large space to work with, is put this back in, which um, 
will like look for a lot more spots all at once. Let's see if I can save this. Come on, I wanted to get, yeah, it gets super stuck so fast. I wonder, if... I wanted to have it start in the middle actually, um, which I think would be more effective also. Um, and, and maybe actually watching it is more fun than anything else. Sorry, I'm like obsessively tweaking this now. Uh, so floor columns divided by two, uh, floor rows. This will have it start in the middle. Let's go to um, oh, so small. What if I, um, let's go back to like uh, 10, just cause that's really small and then see what we get. What do we think folks? Oh, let it jump if it gets stuck. That's interesting. Uh, we've, we've got a little lucky start where it's not getting stuck too badly. It's finding, it's got lots of open space. It's finding other ways to go. Looks like Norway. <laughs> so true. <laughs> If you make it fill, oh, whoa, okay. Uh, let's try having it fill. Um, yeah, it doesn't fill in the way that I want it to in that, um, but that's pretty nice. Like I kind of don't love this. Oh, I guess I could do um, close. Will that make it look? Yeah, that's kind of wacky. It kind of like an interesting. Yeah, it's really satisfying when it finds its way out of a corner. Unfortunately, it's not continuing to go. I did, now it's going to be stuck for quite a while now. <laughs> but I do rather love this shape that it created. I think we've made something right. So what the question I have is, what can I apply this to that is, I don't know that in the video, like demonstrating this makes sense, Perlin noise. Um, <laughs> yes, Stig, there's a family, family, you don't need to watch the coding train. I'm just responding to Stig's message in the chat about uh, uh, celebrating um, his wife's birthday. Okay. Um, all right. I'm trying to think of where I want to go with this next. Can you make it go in both directions? Interesting. It's Europe. Can you make it go in both directions? I don't know what that means. Well, one thing that is interesting to try here, I have an idea. I have a unique idea. It's not unique. I, I, I explored this before. Uh, where is my code? Um, let's give it uh, more direct, more op opportunity to go in different directions. Ah. So let's give it that it can go also to negative one, negative one. And to negative one, uh, one, negative one. So it can go in all the, the diagonal directions as well, or one comma one, or one comma negative one. So now it will get stuck much less. This will ultimately allow it to, I believe, uh, cross. Yeah, so it's not really gonna get stuck as much doing this because it's got so many more ways it could go from each point. Both directions means grow at each end. I got negative one, one twice. Negative one, negative one, one, negative one. Oh, whoops, thank you. That's gonna make a big difference. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get here. I feel like the fill might be, ooh.
I'm really liking this now. I don't know how I feel about this giant line that's like continuing to draw it and the fill. So I think I want to go back to um, have getting rid of that clothes. And um, getting rid of the fill. And let's make it just a little bit, ooh, whoa. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. I mean, I'm gonna like this so much when it's done, but um, let me put no fill back. And then let me also make it a little thicker. Yeah, this is kind of what I would, now it's kind of doing what I imagined. Random coastline generator it certainly is quite like that. You know, one thing that would be interesting would be to require it to do the all of the non-diagonal choices before it's allowed to do a diagonal. Um, thanks to all of you who are watching so late into the night. I, I, people are posting that they need to drop off and go to sleep. So is it still a self-avoiding walk? Not really, I would say. I mean, I think this is up for debate. <laughs> if only, ah, okay. Uh, is it still a self avoiding walk? Yes, no, I don't know. Create. All right, folks. Uh, here's your new poll to vote on. <laughs> and uh, now if we look at the results, um, and I go back, where, where, where were we here? Is this still a self-avoiding walk? Now the issue is I have to get the poll ID. Um, so give me a second here. I have a new poll ID. That's why I, latest, oh shoot. Oh, life is hard. Uh, here we go. Let's see if this will load. Oh, uh, yep, there we go. Okay, we've got the live poll going. Oh, this is fun. I love seeing it going live. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really should have, I guess I should put this overlay back on top of, hold on, back to here, and then we can get it back. Where is, where is it? Here it is. And I can, uh, oh, I have to unlock it and put it here. Okay. Is it still a self-avoiding walk? That's the question. Get a little small. I'm obsessively like, <laughs> there we go. Can you see that? Ooh, it's definitely stuck. Easy fix is also just to let it start in a new random position when it got stuck for long enough. Oh, Incredible Fox has already fixed the newest thing. <laughs> Uh, amazing. That's amazing. So now I really can spin up polls instantly. Uh, that's great. I, I, uh, since I'm only have 15 minutes left, I'll, I'll merge and fix that for next time. Um, so I think the votes are in pretty definitively that, uh, no so far. Okay. Um, what do I want to do here? Let's I've got 15 minutes left. It might deepen my knowledge for me to see if I can implement the Bezier curve mathematics. Whoa. I want to look for um, like just a really quick reference. Uh, I don't know, what did you use, Simon? Oh, let's try this. Um, given, two, given two distinct points, P0 and P1, 
A linear Bezier curve is simply a straight line between those two points. The curve is given, that's linear interpolation, okay? Quadratic, so maybe I should try quadratic first. Recursive definition, explicit definition, polynomial form. Mm, am I going down a crazy uh, rabbit hole? I don't know. Uh, so, um, Simon is saying uh, important detail for Bezier is if you want to look smooth, which is what they're for, the control points must be aligned and any anchor point and two control points must form a line. Got it. That's interesting. So I'm certainly not doing that in this crazy demonstration. And you can see there are lots of jagged parts, although that quality is something that I quite enjoy about this particular pattern. Uh, I think I can remove that right now. So I'm just trying to decide how to best use, I mean, I think the particle system was a good example of a, possibly a way to demonstrate a Bezier curve in a sort of like interesting arbitrary visual way. Um, I would like to explore the math, but I'm a little bit afraid of that. Like trying to read this and implement it uh, live. Um, so if I can ask for all of your help, that would certainly be welcome. Animation of a linear Bezier curve. Okay, so let's let's see if we can figure this out. Now, there's a helicopter now flying around above me. All right, let's let's do a little bit of this for like ten minutes. <laughs> see how far I get uh, to understand a bit more about how the Bezier curve actually works. Um, so let's go back to um, this particular example. Let me duplicate this. And let me see if I can recreate exactly this without this. So I imagine what I need to do is have some iterative process where I say um, x equals lerp between cx, well, x1 and x2 by some amount. Y is lerp between Y1 and Y2 by some amount. And let's call this let's call this amount. There might be a better name for it. And then I'm just saying vertex XY. Begin shape and shape. So what did I do so far? What I did so far is I figured out a way, this is like, um, I, what I, I did very quickly just this, the beginning of this, which is essentially like a linear Bezier curve. In other words, a straight line between the two points. I'm basically looking for a T, so it's called T uh, here. Oh, whoops. Um, well, I'm gonna close these other sketches. Um, this is uh, called T in, right? And I'm using the lerp function. The question is, um, maybe what I should do is not use T because, um, not use lerp because I wanna follow the formulas on this page. And if I don't use lerp, maybe it'll allow me to get there a little bit more quickly. So if I go back to here, and I say, um, just trying to fit everything onto my screen here, which is very hard to do. <laughs> um, right, what am I? Uh, so, so if I'm saying, uh, what's the equivalent here? I'm saying x equals x1, and I guess I should call these x0 just to be consistent.
I'm not using the control points yet. So um, x equals x0 plus t times x1 minus, uh, minus x0. Uh, which is the same as that, okay. Is that right? And then y is y0 So, and then these are, sorry, uh, x0, x1, whoops, this is one, I can't get this right. Okay, so that's good, right? Uh, what did I get wrong here? Oh, C, X, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. What did I do wrong? X2 on line 136. There's no line 136. <laughs> oh, here. All right, I don't need these lines right now. There we go. Okay, so I'm not using lerp. It's just a percent, t is a percentage of the way between this point and this point, and I'm drawing all those as vertices. Okay. Okay, uh, a segment is a one degree Bezier curve. Start there. Um, all right, so let's see. If you look more closely at Simon's telling me I, I can find out in um, uh, his uh, sketch, which is great. Uh, thank you. All right, so now quadratic Bezier. Now I have a P1. Okay, do I add a formula for this? Uh, okay, which one do I look at? This one here, there's just different ways to write it. Okay, so now if we say, um, so ultimately this is actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow its name nomenclature here. This is actually x1, y1. This is now x2, y2. If for p, and I, I honestly like, I would like to do it this way. p0 equals create vector. 100, 200. This is gonna really help me out. Uh, P1 equals create vector. Oh, and I can't do create vector up here. Uh, let's just do all this and draw. Uh, P1 and then P2 equals create vector X um, 300, 200. So I'm really following, um, and then I'm going to say, this is P0 dot X, uh, P2 um, two, two dot X, P0 dot X, P0 dot Y, P2 dot Y, P0 dot X. Did I get it? And then, P0 dot X, P0 dot Y. Uh, one, two, one, two. Mm, P0. What did I mess up here? Oh, this is Y. There we go. <laughs> Y'all with me? So I've got P0, P1, P2. And the idea is that basically I'm extending this, uh, you know, with the linear, there is no control point to sort of suck all of those internal points away, almost like a magnet from the linear path. It's basically creating a quadratic path. And so in addition, there's like the... Um, one minus t squared. So let's look at, I don't know that it matters which one of these that I pick. Um, so let's let's use this one. So uh, if I can once again, here, now I should be able to do make a quadratic one. 
which is let x equals p1 dot x plus one minus t times one minus t times p0 dot x minus p1 dot x plus t times t times p2 dot x minus p1 dot x. Did I get that right? And then if I do that with y, uh, no fill, I think I've got this. Now let me say uh, p1 dot x equals mouse x. I think I'm just going to do the quadratic. So if I click the mouse, so this is now not actually using um, p5 Bezier vertices. Uh, and um, Mr. PhD is telling me that's a good point. I could consolidate this by uh, saying same, right? I could do this. Um, there's probably a, a, a less awkward way I could write this out. But what I like about this is a couple things. One is I've got total control over this right now. So look at this. If I do this, we can sort of see, and I guess I'm missing, if it's not divisible, it's funny how I'm not getting the last point. Um, I think I should do less than or equal to, yeah. So you can see here, like, like here it is as line segments. I'm getting the curvature, if I do 0.5, like really it's just doing that. Like the curvature is related to how uh, frequently I go. The other thing I like about this is I can draw a line from p0 dot x, p0 dot y to uh, x, y. No, 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 uh, that's not what I wanna do. x, y to, to one. Now, there's just so many of them, so this needs to be stroke weight one. Uh, oh, so, um, wait, I, I'm doing, I forgot that, you know, sometimes I just forget that I'm live streaming, can't see the code, I've kind of really made a mess of this, but, um, um, one minus T, oh, this will help, thank you. This makes it a little nicer looking. What I want to do, I need to do this twice. Let me do this twice. I'll show you what, I, in a second you're gonna see what I'm trying to demonstrate. Um, I want to demonstrate, um, I basically want to show, oops, I lost the Wikipedia page, here it is. I want you to see this kind of cool pattern. Oh, it's doing it slightly differently. I want to figure out how it's doing that, but hold on a sec. I, I realize I misread that. Um, P, P1.x, P1.y, and um, if I segment this out, yeah, I was kind of, so what is it actually doing in, oops, it's drawing, oh, it's drawing the lines across these, ah, like the tangents.
It's just the lerp amount. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So what I'm actually doing is saying, I'm doing the linear thing. It's doing the linear thing between P0 and P1. Whoops. And then it's doing, well, this is kind of crazy what I'm doing. And then the same lerping between P, <clears throat> P2 and P1. Uh, no, the other way around. There we go. This is what I was trying to do. <laughs> there, I got it. I wanted to see that mesh. I wanted to see this mesh. I like how they colored it. And... Um, I'm at my time here. I like how they colored it, which is it's a little silly what I'm doing here, but I'm just really fascinated to try to recreate this exact thing. It looks like it's just a sort of mapping a hue of a rainbow of colors. So let's try that. Um, and also, I think I just want to be able to see this a bit more. So hold on a sec. It's also driving me crazy that as I move that point, it gets reset. Um, whoops. So really what I'm doing is saying let P0, P1, and P2, then initialize them all in setup. Also, let's, um, let's give myself, I kind of want, in a weird sort of way, I want to give myself more vertical space and change just so I have space for the code. Um, let's just make this 600. And so I want the points to be 200, 100, 200, 300. Um, and then I have this, and then this should be like 500. And then I'm able to move this, this point. Okay, so let's, um, oh, you hear the wind? <laughs> you can't hear that, can you? Uh, let's move these up even more. Okay, so now, all right, I've got my quadratic um, curve that I am manipulating with this little nice crisscross grid thing. In a, in a crazy sort of way now, I almost don't wanna draw this anymore. Like this is showing, this is just demonstrating how you get that curve. And if I go back to like this, right, we get that moiré pattern effect. Did I pronounce that correctly? But I also can't see it. So let's, oh, it's raining, all right. Uh, what happened to the line? Uh, what happened to my two lines? I need to draw those lines. P zero dot X, P, 0.y, p1.x, p1.y. Okay, we don't need that. And then also p2. Okay, this is pretty cool. All right, now, what I want to do next, 
<laughs> That's driving me crazy. Like, I just need more. I need more space. Uh, this code can sneak over here. I can do this. Great. All right. So next, I just want to try getting the color. Um, HSB time. <laughs> HSB time. Yes, it is HSB time. Now, um, color mode, HSB. And I can say stroke um, T times 360. Uh, 255, 255. And there we go. We have our colors. They're red on both ends. And there we go. So here's an... Uh, so clearly what I should be doing is moving like P1 with Perlin noise. <laughs> so I should be moving all the points. Uh, but let's just try P1. Uh, P1 equals noise. Uh, let T1, let T2, or no, uh, X off. No, I don't know what to say. X off one. Ah, I've got all these T's. T1 and uh, T2. And um, T1 equals random thousand. T2 equals random 1,000, noise T1 times width, uh, noise uh, T2 times height, T1 plus equals 0 0.1, T2, let's make the much less. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what I made. <laughs> The fixed points are uh, should be, I think, also now like zero zero, and width height. I'm not sure what I've created, <laughs> but it is kind of interesting. I think I, I, I have to, I, I really need to stop, but I need P1 and P2, P0 and P2 to move. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, P0 dot, uh, so I'm gonna say, um, let Y speed, let X speed, P0, oh, P0 dot X plus equals X speed. Okay, then, oh, maybe I should just use like a sine wave. Uh, P0 dot X equals map sine of T1, negative one, negative one to one, zero to width. And then what if I do P um, two X, but use cosine. <laughs> don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Very strange. Oh, they need to move up and down in the Y. Uh, Mm, they're moving in like a circle. <laughs> uh, what if I give them, if I'm, Oh, now we're moving along a diagonal. No. <laughs> Did I have it right before? Oh. 
There we go. <laughs> That's kind of looking for. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh yeah, it should definitely uh, make it sound reactive. <laughs> this is very strange. Keep the endpoints fixed and oscillate the control point. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody. I think this is the end of today's live stream. Um, we've made a few different sketches. I can't remember if I posted this one into Discord. Um, I don't have a good mechanism right now for people to share variations off of what they make off of these like sort of more um, uh, uh, kind of improvisational um, live streams. But I would love for you, I guess you can, if you, if you join the Discord or share with me at Shiftman on Twitter, um, that's a great way to share this stuff. I don't know that I really settled on what I want to do for the Bezier function tutorial but I definitely have a better understanding of how it works. The thing that I didn't do, um, which is, uh, is I just did the, um, I implemented this quadratic Bezier curve math and I got something, you know, somewhat like this. So what I would uh, certainly recommend, and it wouldn't be, it's not too much more work, is I just need one more point and then it's one minus T to the third power. Oh, but I, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise. So viewers watching, I would encourage you to take my code, which implements this particular, this is it right here, I'm gonna take this out. This is quadratic Bezier. Can you, um, can you, um, uh, 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 add one more control point for cubic and the reference that you want for that is right here. Can I link directly to cubic? I guess I just need to get to like, uh, where is it? Cubic. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, please do this. <laughs> and see what you get, it's, oh, it's the same sketch. Uh, take the code, see if you can complete this exercise. This is a homework assignment for those of you watching, it's due on Monday. <laughs> um, and you turn in your homework by tweeting at me, at Schiffman on Twitter, <laughs> or um, uh, you can also, um, just to go into the Discord here, the channel would be, um, I guess you could use this share channel here. I'll try to keep my eye on that. Um, this weekend, I uh, would love to see your take, your version of that. Um, okay, so um, thanks everybody. Um, that's it for today. Uh, I've accomplished some goals. Uh, I don't, I don't know what where I'm going with this. I would love your thoughts and suggestions about what I might actually do in the tutorial itself. But I think actually this helps clarify it for me. I think I just want to define the Bezier curve, show how to make a continuous shape with it, and then do something where I move the points around algorithmically. Can you do B splines in the next session? Maybe. <laughs> That's definitely a possibility. Um, by the way, any Notion users out there, a Notion recently released an API um, and I have an opportunity perhaps to, um, um, to do some videos about it. Yeah, I was thinking of trying to use this as a basic like data store. Um, so I'm interested in pursuing this. If this interests you, I would love to hear about it. I'm a little bit over time, but I did okay. Am I going to be able to get a jog in or is the rain too much? We will find out. That's the question. I've enjoyed doing two live streams in a row. Um, speaking of Notion, 
and Nebula, <clears throat> Thomas Frank, um, on YouTube, uh, is also part of Notion. Um, Thomas Frank has a lot of subscribers. Um, and so I believe he has a, oh, Notion tutorials and templates. So I was talking with, um, I hope it's not uh, Thomas messaging with him about doing something with the, the Notion API. Nebula has a channel? That's interesting. Oh yeah, this is one of the originals. It's a thing called Working Titles where it's a bunch of videos about um, different title sequences in different shows. Um, Thomas Attractor. What is a Thomas Attractor? Ooh, what? What? I haven't done this one. Hold on, hold, hold, pause, hold. Stop the presses. This is it? That looks simple enough. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do this. Not today. By the way, my middle name is Thomas and I was talking about Thomas Frank. Oh my God. Uh, it's all coming together. Oh, I'm not signed in. Somebody file an issue for the Thomas Attractor here. Uh, no. So unfortunately there won't be a live stream tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have a, hopefully a nice family weekend. I do plan, I do hope to live stream once per week over the summer. There's a bit of a trade-off. Um, you know, if I, if I really wanted to, um, you know, um, I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask this audience cause you're all the, you're the audience, um, that's watching the live stream, but the more I live stream, the less I'm able to get the uh, sort of like sequence tutorials and coding challenge videos out. Um, <laughs> R Stark says, go for a jog, get some food, and we'll see you back here at six. <laughs> I wish. I if I, I, if I were 20 years younger, <laughs> I'd probably just be live streaming all day. <laughs> but, oh, and look, wow, this is wild what my shirt is doing. That's really cool. But please stay to join the Discord. Let's connect there. Let's share all the wonderful things we're making. You should live stream your sessions. Maybe I can tune in, all of that stuff. Uh, there's eight seconds left. Thank you so much for being here with me today. This was an episode of The Coding Train. I'll be back next week. Stay tuned, subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you to um, CuriosityStream, curiositystream.com slash Coding Train uh, for being a sponsor of today's live stream. And I'll see you next time. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. I'm gonna say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me.
Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. 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 Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's going to be okay today. Dream is not broken. It has not frozen. This is a this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Syntax, I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again in all sorts of text generation analysis things. That I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is. Yes, kittens. Kittens, kittens. I really lose my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and kittens and kittens. I just noticed, by the way, I know the stream is over. That I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna show this to you. That this is a a beta or alpha e feature on YouTube. I believe this is now available for all of my videos. I would love for people to try to use it. So go back to a previous live stream, any video, clip and share. I'm so excited to have this. I've been wanting this forever. Um, it, it, in some ways, it might mean that I could just sort of double down on live streaming and then clip out sections. I have no idea. But that just got, I, I've been asking YouTube to add me to the beta for this. I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm special and I just got added. <laughs> But it might be that it's just on every channel now, but I don't think so. So please, if you are still here and watching that, um, please, please go use that. Try that. See what it, see what it does for you. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Um, that's it. Have a wonderful weekend.